Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pankaj and today we have Karan with us who, has, who is currently pursuing his Masters in Civil Engineering at University of Ottawa. So we'll talk with Karan more about Masters in Civil Engineering. So to start with, hi Karan, thank you so much for coming and uh, could you please introduce about yourself? Yeah, sure. First of all, thank you Pankaj. First of all, I would like to appreciate you for the work which you have been doing because I think you have made all the videos uh, regarding the uh, stu uh, students and the courses which are available in the uh, UOTWA yeah. and it's like it is very much helpful for the newly admitted students as well as for the students who are planning for applying in UOTWA. Yeah. Myself Karan Jariwala, I am from Gujarat, India and I had completed my higher secondary schooling from Shardathan High School and currently I'm pursuing Masters in Civil Engineering at U Ottawa. Okay, so hi Karan <laughs> again. So more about the Civil Engineering. Uh, why did you apply to Canada or why did you apply to University of Ottawa for your Masters in Civil Engineering? First of all, like I talked with uh, many of the uh, seniors who are mm -hmm. studying in Canada, also in New Ottawa. Mm -hmm. So from that, I got to know that uh, there is lots of opportunity for the civil engineers in Canada. Okay. So that was the point where I chose the Canada over like Australia, USA and all. Okay. And uh, particularly talking about New Ottawa, mm -hmm. first of all, the ranking of New Ottawa is uh, very best. It's, I think so, currently it's in top five in Canada. Mm -hmm. And other than that, the Canada campus was very good and I also talked with the seniors they were like uh, the professors are very helpful the mm -hmm. courses which are available at U O T W are like very much deep uh, right. regarding the civil engineering mm -hmm. and the equipments and the technologies which U O T W has are like pretty much best in Canada so that's why I applied for this. Okay so as Karan mentioned uh, it is uh, like top five ranked in Canada uh, the University of Ottawa and he chose Canada based on his seniors advice uh, uh, when compared to the other different countries. More about uh, the course, uh, Karan, could you please tell us the complete course outline like how many years are required or how many terms are required to complete the entire course? Yes, sure. Like if we talk about the course outline, first of all, there are some requirements that mm -hmm. students need to fulfill such as uh, 30 course uh, unit is there. So mm -hmm. students have to achieve 30 course unit okay. in order to complete their master's degree. Okay. And the duration is around uh, two years. Okay. And it is a Carlton, uh, like it is a joint program with the Carlton. Mm -hmm. So students also get benefits to uh, apply for the Carlton courses, okay. which are like op offered by the Carlton University. Yeah. And other than that, the uh, minimum the passing grade of uh, uh, each course is B grade. So okay. you need to get B grade in order to complete your master's degree in okay. each and every subject. Okay. And the credit for uh, one course is around three, uh, okay. three credits. So in order to complete the degree, so you need to all in all complete 10 courses yeah. from which two courses are compulsory okay. which like one of them is I think so professional development workshop mm -hmm. but I've recently heard from the juniors that uh, that its name is little bit changed but okay. the course is uh, same, same. Okay. and uh, the other compulsory course is like university is offering four courses to us mm -hmm. so from that we need to opt one of them okay and regarding uh, the remaining courses mm -hmm. the five courses you need to take from cvg and evg that's mm -hmm. like uh, civil engineering or environmental engineering Got it. so you need to take from that otherwise they won't uh, count you as your degree is complete Got it. And other than uh, that, the other remaining two courses, mm -hmm. uh, you can also opt for the project okay. or you can, if you find internship, you can do the that uh, report and yeah. like make a report on that internship. Yeah. And other than that, you can do like two courses from CVG, EVG mm -hmm. or GNG, like GNG's general courses, which are offered by university. Got it. And uh, as he mentioned, as Karan mentioned that you will have to complete 30, co 30 course credits. So 30 course credits, each course has three credits. So you'll have to do 10 courses uh, or else you can do like eight courses and a project. So basically, we'll uh, come, come, like we'll make another video with uh, 
Karan uh, mentioning all the courses that he took and uh, which uh, courses are easy and which is not easy. Also Karan to adding to this question, uh, so we can complete the uh, masters in three terms yes. or is it for four terms? Before like uh, before I came like students used to complete in three courses, okay. uh, three terms mm -hmm. because uh, there were like a uh, fee because yeah. you, you can say one term fees and all yes. but uh, now recently university have changed the policy regarding the fees yeah. so now it's credit based uh, so you need how much uh, like yeah, uh, terms you can take but yeah. I suggest like to take as much as uh, time you can take because mm -hmm. uh, this time will never come back yeah. and you can at least take like four terms yeah. to complete your degree. Got it and as Karan mentioned uh, that uh, it is U Ottawa is jointly linked with Carlton so basically what does this mean is that U Ottawa and Carlton has a tie up with each other and you can take courses uh, from Carlton that is if you are admitted to University of Ottawa you can take courses of Carlton University and the Carlton University or students can take courses from University of Ottawa. So this is a tie up and uh, uh, the students are really benefited with this because the students get an opportunity to take any courses that they want. So and as he mentioned that the term you can still complete in three terms or you can take four terms in order to complete your masters. Current to speak about the fee structure like what is the total amount of fees that is required I'm, I'm, I'm sure exact figure would be difficult to say but what is an average amount of fees that is required for the entire two years so for uh, now I I cannot say like the entire two years for okay. but for one term I can say like for one cre uh, credit uh, they are charging something like around 1300 something okay so for this uh, fall 2022 mm -hmm. i had taken three courses mm -hmm. so they have uh, charged around 13700 okay because uh, for the fall term you you need to pay for the you have the yes. insurance and all that Got kind it. of thing and for winter also i have uh, taken like three courses but mm -hmm. for that they have charged around 12000 okay. so all in all it's around 25000 uh, for two terms okay so it is 25,000 for two terms considering in each term you take three courses because currently the fee structure is based on credit based and not yearly based that is based on points so three points is three into each point is thousand three hundred dollars so that many dollars is the fee so on an average it is around twelve thousand five hundred dollars yes. for per term. Uh, to speak about uh, the co-op or internship for civil engineering that is master's student in civil engineering so what are the opportunities for co-op and internship like does the university provide or we'll have to find it on ourselves uh, unfortunately for the course like this masters of uh, civil engineering mm -hmm. university is not providing the co-op okay. opportunity or any internship courses but uh, yes, if you find by yourself and if you have the offer letter, university will uh, definitely help you in getting your co-op uh, work permit and they will gonna guide you and help you as much as they can. Got it. So internship is not provided by university. That is, you will have to find your internship or the co-op on your own. Next question would be, uh, how are the professors at Masters of Civil Engineering, like whether they are lenient because students usually ask uh, the question that whether what's the difficulty level. So how would you consider the difficulty level of Masters in Civil Engineering? Mm, the talking about the professors, professors are very good. They okay. are like very lenient, mm -hmm. lenient in terms like uh, they will gonna help you in yes. each and every step. Whenever okay. you got any kind of like difficulty, you just need to email them or you just need to uh, talk through via the Teams or Zoom. So they're gonna uh, re uh, reply you as fast as they can. Yeah. And talking about the difficulty level, yes, if you are doing masters, then it it, it will gonna be a little bit difficult. Okay. But if you're gonna uh, stay focused and just uh, go through the uh, materials which you, uh, professors are providing yeah. and also like attend all the lectures properly then I don't think so you'll find any difficulty in completing your degree. Got it. So the difficulty level is average again and you'll have to focus on your studies that's the main thing that you're coming to Canada. Uh, to speak about more, Karan is also working as a part-time, so he had he is able to manage his studies plus the part-time. So just in case if any students are thinking of doing part-time, so yes, you can definitely do a part-time while you're studying. Last question, uh, Karan, uh, what would be your suggestion and advices to students, like to juniors basically? Okay. 
So talking about you know, suggestions, I would like to say first of all, uh, try to come 15 to 20 days before the course starts okay. because when I had arrived at Canada, the semester was already started. Okay. So that it was very much hectic because mm -hmm. we need to look for our accommodations. We need to attend the lectures. Along with that, we need to focus on the deadlines because yeah. deadlines are very much important over here. You need to uh, submit your assignments on time otherwise you will gonna lose your grades yeah. so i would like to advise them to come as early as they can like yeah. 20 days so they it will be easy also for getting used to with the weather and yeah. all other than that i would like to say that try to avoid uh, doing more than 20 hours because yeah. i have seen many students who like once they start earning they only their focus shifts from studies to the part time yeah. only they'll start doing that cash uh, yeah. on cash yeah. illegally and so don't try to do that mm -hmm. and other than that uh, just stay focused and stay positive like uh, have faith on god because if you are in this situation Definitely. then you have the capability to uh, go through it otherwise god wouldn't have allowed you in that situation and the last thing i would like to say like try to find to be in a good company yeah. like try to make good friends yeah. like i'm not saying that you need to have big groups like yeah. 15 20 friends but at least try to have one or two friends with whom you can share everything it, they motivates you you motivates them yeah. who forces you to level up and you also likewise you need to help yes, them whenever definitely. they need so this is all are the advice for now perfect so the advice that Karan has given us is Please come early as soon as possible because accommodation and settling down in Canada takes a bit of time. So come as soon as possible before the course starts. Uh, uh, and also the second advice that he mentioned was stay in a good company. Don't work excess hours. That is 20 hours is the limit for international students. So don't work more than that and focus more on studies. And third one is keep pushing yourself. The fourth one is keep pushing yourself. Keep motivating yourself. Be in a good company and motivate others. Thank you so much, Karan. These words are really, really helpful, not only to students, but also to me. Thank you so much for coming here. I hope you did like the video, students. Uh, if you did like the video, please click the thumbs up button. Please do share and subscribe to my channel. I will definitely mention Karan's uh, LinkedIn profile on the description. I'll also mention my Instagram and LinkedIn profile in the description. If there's any questions, do mention them in the comment section. You can also ping Karan directly on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.